Okay, it is 5 o'clock p.m. on Tuesday, March 12, 2024. We will call the Board of Works and Safety meeting to order. Roll call, please. Weagle. Here. Man. Here. Daniel. Here. In front of you are the minutes from our from our last meeting on February 27th. Um, I did note two different changes to Rosie. Uh, two, two changes. One is under lift station. Uh, station is misspelled. And then under Mayor's and Commissioner's Caucus, uh, there was a slight spelling error there. But besides that, any other changes or corrections? Nope. Okay. I'll make a motion. We approve the minutes as presented uh, with the noted changes. Okay. Motion seconded. Further discussion? All those in favor should be the usual sign. It is unanimous. Next up is the encouragement application for 754 North Norfolk Cove. Come on up. Can you name and address, please, and what you're planning to do? Uh, my name is Brendan Perry. This is my wife, Bailey Perry. Address 754 North Nor Norfolk Cove. Um, so we are trying to build a fence, and the easement um, is we're obviously trying to go back a little bit into the easement. So our property line goes back. Um, our yard kind of drops off into a ditch. So we're trying to build up until the point where it's flat still. Now the problem is we have an REMC electrical box mm -hmm. in the corner. So we know we have to avoid that. But what we're hoping is we can build around it and then go along the flat part of our yard for the rest of the duration um, so, I don't see any other conflicts besides the box, so I figured if we were around it, then we could still provide them the access we need, uh -huh. while also getting a little bit more room inside of our fence. Okay. Um, water, sewer infrastructure issues? Mike, are we good with water? Uh, water's up front. All front? Yeah. yeah. I think sewer, I, if I remember, I think sewer's up front as well, so. Um, so, uh, yeah, the only thing I would say, and again, because you're, it's not our electric, I can't really speak for our EMC, but uh, if you try to accommodate around that, I think you probably should be in good shape. I don't think we have any issues on our side. Is there any issues on the department? Okay, any questions from the board? Uh, like I say, you need to probably check with I mean, As far as our EMC is concerned, is that cool? I mean, I don't know where that line is buried out there. The way the fence is, the way the diagram for the fence that you're looking at could be close to that, so if, if they have to do any work out there whatsoever, you'll have to they'll tear that down and then you'll have to put it back in your expense. So I follow on that line that you have, like the drawing on that. So you've got to be really careful um, when you're putting the post in out there, you got to have it located because I don't want anybody to get an electric sheet by putting the post down there. you got to be real careful because that line could be that line could be buried anywhere right through there, um, pretty close to where your drawing is. So just because you're staying away from the box doesn't mean you're going to be within that, where that line's actually buried. Oh, we did? Yeah, so just make sure you know your locates all that kind of stuff. Yeah, we did talk with them. And it was, yeah, they gave us a distance on from the front, from okay. the side. And so okay. it, but we haven't called them to get the lines drawn out yet. Yeah, so. we definitely have to make sure of that. It's a scary thing when you go off camera. Well, and I think, you know, typically uh, locates are good for, I think, you know, 20 days. So whenever you're getting ready, just keep that in mind that locates are good for that period of time, but it may take a little longer to get them out there. It just depends. So, again, I don't want to speak for RMC, but from the city standpoint, I don't see a problem with this. So I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, uh, encroachment agreement uh, at 754 North Norfolk Cove as presented. Second. Motion seconded for the discussion. Sign. It is unanimous. Rosie, tell the next steps. Okay, so this will get back to the uh, planning commission tomorrow, and then we can go back and finish up what we need to do. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. For you and then Thank you. A few from there. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming tonight. Appreciate it. Okay. Next up is the um, street closing permit for first Friday, Nikki. Yeah, I don't know if you're here for that, but you want to talk about yeah. that, right? I didn't know if I'd have to say anything. Well, you may not have to. Is there okay. any changes or anything we need to know about for first Friday? Nope, it's the same as last year. Um, 
Did I see you're planning to put um, food trucks at both ends this time? Yeah, we did that last oh, year. Oh, we did that last year. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah, it's kind of like the ends of a mall. Yeah. You kind of anchor it and yeah. drive traffic all the way yeah. through. Any questions of Nikki or the first started? The only thing, um, they usually try and request to not pay for the um, electric fees. Mm -hmm. So what we usually do is just charge them one fee for the whole year. Or the whole like a temporary fee, if you will. Yeah, it's like a 40 hour. Okay. And that's, that's all we've ever charged. Well, the other thing with the food trucks, you might mention there's like three hour fees. And the health department has fees. Sure. And there is sometimes there's confusion. Well, I've already paid the health department, so they don't think they have to pay the city. Well, or they pay the city, they don't think they have to pay the health department. So there's a lot of communication there that I've been trying to get the health department to understand the need. And if they get that, they need to say, hey, we need to also get the city permit. So we need to do for this. Yeah. And sometimes people get a little excited about that. Um, so, yeah, for you, we can try to communicate that to our food trucks so they understand there's two sets of food trucks. So I think on that note, um, Dan, you'll remember that the four events typically that goes under there, so we don't necessarily have a permit for this type of purpose. But I will tell you just in advance, Nikki, and then obviously for your food truck vendors and stuff, that at a retreat we had a lot of conversation about food truck permitting and changes that we're looking at making this year. I don't think it'll impact for Fridays for this year, but just know for next year, I think we're looking at being proactive about um, really taking a hard look at what is the appropriate role of food trucks in our ecosystem. And it really isn't so much for the special events as for the one-offs, uh, the one where the truck pulls up and is across the street from somebody that's also selling food on a you know, a, a normal Thursday or something sure. like that. So I only say that to say it's, it's nothing that you need to do at this very moment, but I will tell you that food truck changes are probably coming in the future from the council, okay. uh, just based on our conversations. Um, but, you know, obviously under the first Friday umbrella, um, I, don't, I, I don't think we, no. it's kind of under their purview, correct? Yes. So. And I think I sent you paperwork to that. <laughs> With that, um, I'll make a motion we approve the first Friday uh, street closing permit uh, for the dates that they prescribed, as well as um, as well as waive uh, the electric fees except for the one temporary. For the second that motion second for the discussion. That was a picture of the usual sign. It's unanimous. Great, thank you. thank you. Okay, next up on the agenda is the bid award for the fire truck. Um, I have been notified by Tom that we are taking that he would like us to table that for the next meeting. Um, Mike, I know you're here. I hate to go. I hate for that to go to waste. You get to come to a meeting and not get to speak. Do you have anything you want to add? To no, that? I just wanted to make sure you didn't have any questions. Or anything. Okay. We did go through the spec, and there was a couple changes. Um, actually, nine. Okay. Either plus or minus those ads or deletes. So okay. um, I sent it back to the dealer, and they were going to make those changes. And how it'll adjust on the, the price, I have no idea. Also, there was a question about um, change order fee. There is no change order fee at this point. Now, a month before delivery or whatever, if something's changed, sure. there is a fee to change anything, and then it's also the cost or the credit of whatever that change is. Okay. So. Okay, so right now we're trying to effectively head it off of the pass, right? Like we're trying to make sure that the specs that they that we provided them. So there's no surprises. Okay. Yes, yeah. so, and so when we accept the bid, it's it's the true bid, if you will, that we work through the majority of the specs and mm -hmm. try to make sure all those T's are crossed and I's dotted. That's correct. Okay. However, also in the bid yeah. package, yeah, there was a 30-day stipulation. It's after the 30 days yes. that we accepted they were going to charge us. So, but we believe that the next board of works meeting still fits within that 30 day time frame. That I'm not okay. Positive. Well, I'm I assuming you're so tabling it to the next meeting. I'm assuming that we're going to be <laughs> in that boat. I believe so. Okay. We're going to be cutting close. Okay. If you will confirm that, 
I mean, I, we can always have a special meeting if we need to, but I would rather sense count my days right now. Well, and, and frankly, since we're going back and forth with them, I would hope that they know we're doing this in good faith with the idea of we're trying to get everything squared away before we say yes. So I would hope that they take that into consideration. But again, if we have to call a special meeting to approve that bid, we can we can do that. So again, we only had one bid, so it's not like we're competing with multiple bid dollars. I think the next meeting will be 29 days from the day we open. Okay. Well, then that's within the third. I point. That's possible. So I was going to say, I think it's 30 from receiving the bid. Yeah. I'm going to say, yeah. Okay. Very good. Any questions? Okay, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. So we will table the bid award for the fire truck until the next meeting. Next up is the pole inspection and treatment proposal 2024 Osmos. Is that correct, Sean? That was great. Okay, so I will turn it over to you. All right, so it's been uh, 11 years since we've done a project like this. And basically, what we're looking to do is uh, we have every one of our poles tested in our system. Um, what we've done this year, we split our poles in halves. So we have, uh, we're going to do half of our poles this year and half of our poles next year. I sent these bids out to three different vendors. Um, this vendor here uh, was the cheapest, and they, they do a different process than the, the company we used last time, which we weren't super happy with. Um, so they do an actual visual inspection of these poles instead of, they have, the other company had a special piece of equipment that they would hit the pole with and it pulled around and it changed like a magic wand. Mm -hmm. and it did, um, a lot of those poles we replaced were not in bad shape and then we replaced some that they said were questionable that were in really bad shape. So, um, so we're moving on to a company by the name of Osmos. There's two different options. When you look at the packet um, in there, there's, um, there's price schedule one, which is pole inspection and treatment. Uh, basically, at that point, they will test the pole if it tests bad to the point where they think they can get more life out of it. They'll, they'll stick a treatment inside the pole um, to try to extend the life of these poles. Um, the second option is price schedule number two, and this is just testing the pole, and if it's bad, letting us know. Um, the difference is in cost. Um, if they treat the poles, they're estimating around seventy-seven to eighty thousand dollars for testing. Half the poles. Um, if we do the pole inspection only, it's going to be right around thirty-five thousand. So, uh, in in my head, I can change a lot of poles for thirty-five thousand dollars. <laughs> so, if they report bad, we'll, we'll just go out. And, you know, we focus always on customer service. Uh, we're not pinching pennies all the time. We do the best we can, but when we can, I think, better use that money and just replace the pole. And not have to worry about it for another four years. That makes a lot more sense than putting a band-aid on it and trying to get the last another five. And so, um, so that's what I would like to do um, is to approve this contract with Osmos. It has been um, written by uh, Marsha, the city attorney. She did make some changes, and those changes were made. And I do have a title in this form for her that I'll show her later. <laughs> so the changes were all made um, that she requested. And so I guess uh, today I'm, what I'm going to ask for you is, is you, if you look at that full inspection only price schedule two, it's a price per pull. If they pull up to a pull that looks good, they're not going to waste your time and test it if it's only five years old or four years old or whatever. So they will do an inventory of the pull for us, put our GPS data in and record it. That's, that's a particular cost. What they do is they estimate how many of those poles they think they'll find and how many they're going to have to actually test, and they're estimated right around thirty-three to thirty-five thousand is what's going to be the cost. So what I'm going to recommend today, and with your approval, is I will request to approve the Osmos price schedule two full inspection only cost uh, with Osmos with a not to exceed value of forty thousand dollars. That way, if they find a few more bad holes than they think, we'll still be within there. But if they find a bunch more, we're still not on the hook for anything more than forty thousand. So, so you said that they're going to be inspecting what percentage of our poles? Fifty percent, eighteen hundred and twenty-three. Exactly, eighteen hundred and twenty-three poles. Okay, um, and ultimately, then the idea is, is if they find a bad hole, they let you know, and then we replace it in house when we can get to it. Kind of thing. correct. Yeah. So, um, they. If you read to this, this proposal is a 103 page proposal. I'm going to stop for you. Um, yeah, welcome. Uh, but 
There's a lot of data in that they record, the GPS data they give us, um, the inventory of the pole for us, so we know it's on every one of our poles. Um, they mark them on a map, and, and it comes with software that we can go in, we can pull, pull up just the, the bad pole, or just the, the poles that are kind of in the middle, you know, that we should probably need some attention. Um, if there's a pole that needs a ground wire repair, um, they, they'll put that on there as well. So um, we'll have access to all that software to, to do any sort of spreadsheet or mapping. If I want to send a crew out, I can just download that, hand it to them, and they can go take care of it. that we approve uh, the agreement with Osmos and a not to exceed amount of you said forty, right? right. A, a not to exceed amount of forty thousand uh, dollars for full inspection. Second. Motion second. Further discussion. All those in favor should the usual sign. It is unanimous. Bills. I'll make a motion to pay all accounts payable in the amount of $687,120.35 from the allowance of accounts payable vouchers dated 312.24 for checks. I'll second. Motion is second for the discussion. All in favor for the mutual signing. It is unanimous. I make a motion to pay all accounts payable in the amount of $404,461. From the allowance of accounts payable vouchers dated 312.24 for EFT payments. Second. Motion seconded for the discussion. And the third for the usual sign and it's unanimous. I make a motion to pay all accounts payable except overtime in the amount of $267,038.37 plus overtime in the amount of $13,064.06 for a total of $280,102.43 for the pay file ending 223-24. Motion seconded. Further discussion? All those favor for the usual sign. It is unanimous. Thank you. Department reports. Uh, we'll start with Lily. You want to introduce yourself and talk about the Youth Council. So my name is Lily Joseph and I'm part of the Youth Council. And so at our last meeting, we just talked about the bills that were in the last session of the House and the Senate. And then we also talked about the youth forum that we're planning to host in April. And then our search project that we did, we went to the Maine Society of Whitley County and played with the It's a tough shot that somebody's going to do it. <laughs> Questions of Lily? Thank you, Lily. Sean. As I said a few minutes ago, we continue to change polls out of Bear Road. Um, I think we're about 12 <coughs> poles uh, left on that project, so uh, it's been a, a great project. Not only for obviously the, the residents in that area, but for my linemen that are training right now. I have a lot of apprentice linemen right now, so I get a lot of hands on training with mm -hmm. our hearing and linemen. I've got great hearing up right now that um, are really teaching these guys what they need to know moving forward. So, um, and there's a reason why all of our apprentices finished off the class. So, <laughs> So yeah, it's, it's been a great project for, for that. Um, I've been working over at uh, Big Beach Restaurant and trying to get uh, all the overhead power lines to go through the gas station uh, removed. Uh, so we'll be working with uh, Big B on that. Um, that'll be really nice. That's going to be the whole city right in the middle of the parking lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, it goes right on the top of the fuel pumps. And, nice. I would just move. That's, that's beneficial. Yes. 
Thank you, Carrie. The surfing of the internet lines that we had in Solomon tests and are operational, so we are scheduling moving our equipment over to them for the ship here so we'll get off of our uh, century line line and we're going to be on the line and increase the speed on those things. Um, we have a network outage scheduled this Sunday at 7 a.m. Hopefully it's scheduled for an hour. <coughs> Hopefully it'll only take about 15 minutes. We have to install a new surf in uh, the firewall, so that's going to take so another copier, the last one out of the water department, all the people the new contract, so that's done. A meeting tomorrow is filming on the server upgrade, which is supposed to happen Monday and Tuesday of next week. So I'll be on vacation in Florida. <laughs> 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 other than that, that's just the other day to do stuff. Other than that. Question to Terry. Yeah. Thank you. Gary. All right. We we received 19 applications for our new hire of three police officers. We're disappointed in that. We've set April 13th as our testing date for the physical agility and written test. Um, and we've made the decision to continue taking applications up to the testing date. So hopefully someone that may have missed it can still get in there and get their application in. <coughs> we've had several officers go to some good trainings since the first of the year. With that, one of the best trained police officers. We have officers out doing operation pullover, looking for seatbelt violations, other violations. Uh, this is paid for through a grant through the Indiana Criminal Justice Institute. So it doesn't cost us any anything to have extra trouble. Dispatch, we replaced a couple tabletops that were covered under warranty. And uh, Shane, uh, Shift leads will be going to a leadership training. I think later this week or early next week. Just in case there are anybody heard the tornado sign going up at 10:15 today. We participated in a statewide tornado. Happy severe weather preparedness. Questions of Gary. Thank you. Welcome back, Matt. We are glad to have you back. Thank you. Well, besides trying to get up to speed of what everybody's done in the last few weeks, why I've been gone, um, we do have 521 uh, kids signed up for baseball, softball. That's all together. Um, and that is going to be finalized as far as teams tomorrow night um, for softball. Um, then they'll go next week for baseball. So we're moving right ahead. With that, we're opening up all, uh, well, I shouldn't say all, but we're opening up Dreamland bathrooms. Um, because the weather's been pretty good and a lot of kids are right up there playing. So that'll be the first one. Um, we just opened that today. And we have a, a new staff member starting next Monday. Um, she will take the spot of the admin administration. And as a reminder, our uh, previous administrative assistant, Andrea, has just gained more and more responsibilities. So she's now under a programmatic role. That 
again, having that person that's there answering phones eight hours a day and all that kind of stuff, that's really the, the goal of the admin assistant position. Right. Um, how does, it, it, offhand, and I'm probably putting you on the spot, I'm sorry, Matt, um, how does this year's enrollment for softball, baseball compared to previous years? Is it same, up, down? It's, it's a little down. Okay. It's, it's not as much as last year, okay. um, but it's not a drastic year. Okay. So, so one good thing is we're going to have to report in the major. The year, that has to happen. Yes. Oh, oh, we're, 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 we saw an uptick in the older group, the okay. older age group, and there's a huge uptick in, uh, I think, boys minor. Okay. To where we might have to have <coughs> eight teams. Oh, my. So um, we're, we're seeing the younger and the older, there's not much <coughs> in between. Gotcha. Right now. That's the last year of the minor. It's got a lot of kids in it. Some of them are mature in the 14 years. Oh, yeah. So the uh, minor might be a little bit, but maybe you're taking off. That's good. Good stuff. It runs in waves, for sure. Hey, that is, that's for yeah. sure. Thanks, Matt. Mike. Uh, down here on South Chauncey Street, we're working. We're to the point where we uh, got a call in to the guy that's going to board the uh, manhole, and uh, then we're going to cut the street when he can tell us when he's going to be here so we can get that done. Because gotcha. uh, that, that street's going to be closed down both directions. For a couple of days? I would think, I hope, a couple of days. Okay. Um, Probably be, be, will it be blocked off there, kind of the alley-ish area, or where were you thinking? Well, we'll probably block it off at the alleys, you know, yeah, so that they don't get down there and, and, and not be able to turn around or whatever. But um, yeah. like I said, it went pretty well this week after the gas company got got their yeah. uh, line found and that, and then also the new uh, car wash. We're hooking that up tomorrow. So looks like they had a whole lot of lines that they pulled up with their machinery. Like, yeah. <laughs> so we'll uh, get that taken care of. Okay. When when you prepare to shut down that road, we we let actually. We're, we're, yeah, I'm, we're not we're not looking until maybe Wednesday of next week. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's going to be. Uh, we don't want to do it on a Monday. And we don't want to do it on a. Friday, yeah. So okay. hopefully we get there, do it Wednesday, get them in, get that board, get it set in, and, and get it filled in and put it back up. Oh, so you don't anticipate a long-term closure or anything like that? Just to no, but now that I said that, nothing will go right. Yeah, you know? I'm, and, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, we're hoping like just a day, open it one day and then close it the next. Okay. But, you know. Cool. Questions of Mike? Thank you. Mike? Uh, for the gentleman, we still don't have our phone meter done. Uh, we're switching to someone different. Uh, the first guys that were in, <coughs> I don't believe I really knew what they were doing. Oh, well, so we had a uh, guy from Nathan. He's a worker for first time in one for And he used to do all our meters and everything like that. And he went to Torrey and is over with our field service. And he was very upset when he got a phone call from us about us. So he actually came up and so spent Friday afternoon and into the early evening figuring everything out, uh, sending quotes for the headworks. We don't actually need a full meter on that because mm -hmm. our speed system actually converts it all oh. to a level. Okay. So we'll save a little bit of money there, but we've already purchased a new flow meter. Mm -hmm. So they're going to take that flow meter and put it on our Teflon, which is one of the original ones on the time we got. Oh, wow. So we're going to take it and put it there and upgrade it. He's going to work with us on uh, later, mm -hmm. doing that switch over. So we'll have brand new units uh, basically in and out. Yeah. And then they're uh, waiting on, they have to put in a new flow tube on the one for the uh, return sludge line for that to calculate correctly. So, which makes sense because it has that and it's just a year. So I'm only going to go back from that and then hopefully that will be done. He's, he's assured me that it will be taken care of. So, and, and he, he's really good. Uh, our restroom project remodels on that should uh, first or second week of April, so those should take place. And the guys took advantage of the normal road, which I think everybody is, and uh, already has a UV structure channel and everything ready to go for the inspection season. Which will 
3rd, April 1st. Uh, both are still not in yet, but everything is cleaned out and ready to go for a year. And with the new control panel with Eagle Glen, uh, they took it upon themselves and put the uh, install three bollards in front of the new panel. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to stop available, but it will dramatically slow down. <laughs> so, so maybe we'll just bump the panel. So, yeah. Yeah. so basically, like during the wintertime, when we're plowing, yeah. because you come around the curve and down the hill and it's right there. So yeah, it's yeah. probably just something that does a barrier. Yeah. It's been a great job on that. It's really good. That's all I got. Like, yeah, Where's the mic? Having trouble just sitting in on your construction, meeting you know, the Hunter South Project. And uh, it's coming in, it's coming in really nice. I love the minutes of the meeting in my truck. <laughs> I'll bring them in uh, for the next meeting. And uh, yeah, so everything's progressing very well out there. So, yeah. Yeah, there was one little pickup pick up with the uh, control yeah. panel, but uh, I think they, they worked through that and we got that taken care of. Yeah. I was not there at the meeting today, but. Uh, I seen that uh, Nathan is on the other side. Yeah. Yep. So I haven't read them yet, but I'll read those tomorrow. Yeah. I'll read them so we can take it. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> That's great. Thank you. Yep. Marcia, yep. Rosie. Yep. Uh, a couple things. Uh, Tom has, uh, Tom let me know that uh, Truck 101 is out of service this week for scheduled maintenance. And truck 102 has an air leak in the pressure switch. A uh, new part is on order. Um, as mentioned, the truck committee reviewing the bid, working on some of the manufacturer stuff, and working on some of the some of the pieces they need to adjust and change. <coughs> and so, again, report works in two weeks, as you know. Uh, hiring process: we did um, just for public information, more work. You know, this was you're in on this. We did narrow it down to two candidates. Uh, I think they are taking. They are each taking a time or a shift with our fire department, and then from there, chief order will select one of the two. Which I know we all felt like all three of the candidates we had were good candidates. So narrowing it down to one is going to be a challenge. I know for him, but um, so really positive there. Uh, Kelly has uh, their. Um, he's going to be out for a couple of days this week, but. Uh, they have two guys out at your chase televising the sanitary sewer main, um, and uh, when needed, they will call two other guys to bring the back truck out to clean the line as needed. Uh, they had a couple of guys helping the mechanic do some work on the sweeper. They're putting together a quote for a 50-50 sidewalk application as a reminder to the public. We do have a 50-50 sidewalk program, and for some reason, your public sidewalk, the sidewalk that's parallel with the street. Uh, is in bad shape, you can actually partner with us 50-50, and um, basically you're just paying for half of the effectively the labor materials, and we do that in-house. So um, so we did have an applicant for the application for that. Uh, they are, the street department's getting chippers ready uh, for lid pickup, which starts April 1st, the week of April 1st. They're continuing street and alley maintenance, and um, they have put together the paving list for AZ, uh, for 2025 to start kind of getting the estimates so that we're prepared to go in for the second round of community crossings with the hope of actually getting maybe 1.5 million, which is a raised number from what the normal million is. So um, so that's positive. Um, I know that Chip had told me he didn't, he didn't give me a report, so shame on him, but, um, but he uh, did mention that um, and Matt, you were in, I think, on that meeting uh, meeting regarding Eagle Park that yes. we're projecting a start time within the next month. Is that what? Yeah, right? shingle. Yeah, shingle. Yeah. yeah. They said that they would be bringing stuff over and they were going to talk to us for a stage. Yeah. Thing today, so they're going to start the games. So if you go by Eagle Park, you'll notice there's structures that are already in place. I think uh, stormwater. I think there's stormwater structures for Mike. So. Um, and I know, Sean, you said that you're going to be helping out a little bit on that. And so it's, a, it's definitely a team effort. Eagle Park is a team effort. So um, I know that that's happening. Trail is getting close. Uh, I know that there was a couple of things that they've had to switch and move around a little bit. There are some easements they still have to acquire that were different than what we thought they were going to be. But ultimately, things seem to be smoothing out. So hopefully, we go to bid within the next month-ish. That's the hope. So, um, but, you know, as mentioned before, uh, we may, we may end up, that may end up getting delayed again because I said something, so. 
Um, trying to think what else. Three bone location met today. Um, some miscellaneous projects, but they're still testing the LML flash carbon grain site. Yeah, forever, kind of. So uh, thanks to people who have owned that in the past that just dumped chemicals on the ground. We appreciate that. Um, I don't think I have anything else. Well, that was, I think that's the opioid settlement plan, right? Yeah, I'm going to give some questions. No. I don't have a clue. Well, the answer to that is, is we've already dedicated it to uh, Mission 25 yeah, to do the recovery, to do the recovery program. So, yeah, I mean, and again, I, you know, here's the thing that I think people favor what it is. But I think what something that's, that people need to realize or understand is, is that there is strict regulation on what we use at least a portion of that money on, right? And if the purpose is to get money from the opioid settlement fund to go toward recovery services, it makes sense to fund the agency that's doing recovery services, which is Mission 25. Right. So, yeah, and I appreciate that. Thanks for bringing that to my attention, Dan. So, yep. No, you're good. I, I appreciate you letting me know that. Uh, I think it's, uh, I think that's a very positive step, not only for us, but for Mission 25, and I know they'll be good stewards of those dollars. So. But yes. So, anything else? Thanks, so. We have no press. Nikki, you want to say anything else? Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, we will call the meeting adjourned. Thank you. No, I see you.